um, my next guest, Vicente Rodriguez Fernandez. Is a Cali human rights activist, educator, community organizer, writer, artist, and pop culture expert. He is the co director of the Legacies of Empires program at the University of Washington and has been involved in organizing the Dick Inabistar initiative since 2010. He has co-founded several initiatives to improve Sinti and Roma narratives in mainstream media and founded Roma Pop, an international organization lobbying for Sinti and Roma narrative rights in pop culture and comics. He has built strategic alliances with African American, Jewish and Armenian youth in recent years. His work gained attention from the US comic book industry during the 2016 New York Comic Con. Wow, what a CV. Vicente, um, which visions of Roma for Europe do you have in your mind? <coughs> I mean, you did a lot in the artistic way. Hello, everybody. Um, okay, let's separate the question. Let's divide the question in two parts. I think talking about visions of Romani future, there is two questions here. I think one is what is our vision, which means what we want to achieve, what are our goals, what is our vision, you know? And the other question is what is their vision of the future, which is what we expect to happen. In my case, and I, th and I think it's the case of a lot of people in this panel and probably over there, what we are seeing happening, or what we expect to happen is very different of what we want to happen. So. So I think I will talk first about what I expect to happen. I think in the future of Roma and Europe, there is many interesting things that are going to happen that are going to become a change of paradigm. Um, for example, something I was talking before with NASCO is uh, the demographical change affecting the system of beliefs of Romani people. That's a very interesting topic. Uh, a few years ago, most Romani people in Western Europe were uh, Catholic Roma. In Eastern Europe were Muslim or Orthodox. In the last 60, 70 years, the advent of the Evangelical or Pentecostal uh, Church, incredibly popular among Romani people, sometimes led by Romani people, has supposed a very powerful movement, counting in Spain right now, according to some statistics, with 80% of the Romani population. This has powerful effects in the composition of not just the Roma community, but also a Romani movement as a whole. So this is a very interesting topic to discuss. Then you have the phenomenon of Eastern European Roma, who also are converting in mass to different forms of Christianity. Again, particularly Pentecostalism is very strong. And as they migrate and move to the West, they are re-Christianizing the West. It is a very interesting thing. I mean, then you have, you know, these are just, I'm just shooting and brainstorming different thoughts that I have. Then you have the fact that the European far right is growing out of control. Uh, fascism, different forms of Nazism are an incredible threat. At the same time, there is a, there is a, lifelong association between conservative positions in the far right and traditional Christianity. What an incredible paradox. Roma are some of the most Christian people in Europe, yet they are targeted by a supposedly Christian far right. So, you know, this is, these are very interesting developments. Uh, what will happen in 20, in 30 years? Again, when we look at the history of the Romani movement, a huge part of the Romani movement start in, started in uh, communist Yugoslavia, in communist Eastern Europe. This affected the ways we understood leadership and what were the priorities that were aligned many times with the with the, with, the, with the policy of the different parties that were ruling different countries in the old Soviet Union. What's going to happen with the Romani movement in 20, 30 years when, when Christianity in the West becomes such an official part of public Romani life and not just personal? This is interesting. Right now, for example, what I see is that uh, this demographic change is affecting the division and connection between Romani communities and Romani activists. Romani activists experiment different degrees of disconnection from the community, sometimes through the educational process. But right now, it's not just a matter of educational process. It is a matter that it seems to me that our communities are going in very different directions than our elites. In the Balkans, too, 
Romani people are known for being syncretic. They, uh, some Romani communities were able to celebrate both Ramadan and Christmas. People will go to the house of their neighborhoods and they will celebrate different religions. There was an incredible, uh, uh, de uh, an incredible decrease of syncretism and coexistence. Also, in the last 30, 40 years, Romani have become stronger Muslims everywhere. So it seems our Muslim Roma have become stronger Muslims, and our Christian Roma have become stronger Christians. And if this shows anything, in part, it is the failure of the Romani movement to include a wider spectrum of Romani voices. So what does desperate people do? Desperate people pray. The spirit people pray, whatever is Allah, whatever is to Jesus. So I think these are interesting, these are interesting aspects of the development of the Romani movement and things that we're gonna see in the future. So this is one thing. Then there is a lot of things that we need, that we need to discuss. We need to discuss demographics. Um, Romani people are the younger people in Europe. We're talking about the majority of Romani people in Europe are under 25 year old age. You know, demographic pyramids in different countries are changing radically. Um, what's gonna be our future with these young people? This is is, you know, this is an, it's a Roma emergency, it's an international emergency, it's a European emergency, but it has an incredible opportunity. Again, we are the younger people in Europe. In a sense, the future is ours, but we are not capitalizing so far, meaning we Romani people, but also we, the Romani movement, we are not capitalizing so far at all in the potential of our young people, despite his vastness. Another thing, another thing, for example, that's happening in the future. I mean, everybody is talking about AI, artificial intelligence. Everybody is talking about robotization. Everybody is talking about nanotechnology. And we are talking about bringing children to school. Something that I hope happens in the future is that we switch our attention to solving mistakes of the 18th century. And we are, for the first time, riding the current wave of development. Uh, one of the biggest problems that happened in the history of Romani people is that we failed to adapt to the industrial revolution. Traditional Romani jobs, craftsmanship, selling and buying horses, and making baskets, participating in small-scale businesses, radically changed at the turn of the 19th to the 20th century. For us, it was a very hard thing. Many Romani communities have still not adapted to the industrial revolution, especially when you go to the countryside in certain countries. So a question for me and for our future is, are we gonna be able to adapt and change the narrative? Something I would love is a Roma conference on nanotechnology. I would love to have a Roma conference of artificial intelligence. I would love to have a Roma conference about, you know, uh, demographic changes, uh, climate change, whatever thing, and even move forward these speeches, these trends, ride the wave, to be able to participate. I think we have, in general, an incredibly poor ambition, you know? You know, like, it's everything we are asking to be able to be as, as, as miserable as everybody else. We are asking for boring jobs. We are asking for mediocre lives. We are asking for the bare minimum in our existence. What a poor speech. What a poor speech. It's not about to be better. It's about to see our potential and to ride the wave of human progress because I think there is so many incredible things that we can do. Something in the negative side that's happening. Yes, a vision for the future is very probably the war in Ukraine is gonna spill over in Eastern Europe. We are seeing that Germany and France are de-aligning with the United States because they are afraid of the war. We are seeing that Hungary, Poland, Romania are aligning now with the United States because they're ready to fight Russia. It could happen at any moment that we are having a land conflict in Europe in the area where there is more Romani people present. Are we prepared for that? Are we ready for evacuation? Are we ready for fighting? Are we ready for creating an underground network of people that can provide housing in a safe space? We are not. So many things are happening right now. Not to talk, for example, about, again, you know, when people talk about uh, climate change, green energy, you know, all this stuff, it seems this has nothing to do with us, but it has an incredible impact in our life. Actually, there is something that is called, uh, you know, like uh, uh, green justice, and Roma are incredible victims of uh, environmental oppression and injustice. We live this on everyday life has a huge impact. What is gonna happen 
Last year, we had about 100 million refugees in the world, if I'm not mistaken. The projections for this year are even bigger. As climate change affects affect Central Africa, millions of people are coming to Europe. What is going to happen with us, with this incredible instability? We gotta be prepared, we gotta be on the top, we gotta be advanced, sophisticated, and dynamic. Again, being Roma does not mean to talk about flamenco every day, to talk about sardas every day, to talk about education, health, or employment every day. We, you know, a few years ago I was talking about comics, about pop culture, about the importance of, of globalized culture, you know. I think this, this could have a huge potential impact for our people. Uh, but there is so many things that we need to do better. It's always extraordinary to me, extraordinary, that we are some of the most imaginative and creative people in the world. And yet, some of our congresses and events are some of the most boring places you can go. How this can happen? I, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will seriously try to, to, to teach people, to teach our brain, our imagination, to be able to be actively creating, participating, and using the power of our traditional approach to life, that is a celebration of life in our work as, as activists. Okay, these are some visions, these are some thoughts, and what I'm the most interested, apart from listening to my wonderful companions, is to open a bit the debate. What are our visions, what are our hopes, what we want, and what can we change? Thank you very much. Thank you, Vicente. Thank you very much.